Hi, everybody. It is March 18, 2019. I want to pass along some videos that were passed along to me by subscribers, all of whom I want to thank because I would never have come across some of these videos. Here is your first one. They say that ministers and, pol ministers and rabbis and Catholic priests, they shouldn't get involved in politics. I think that this is the time we should speak up. I'm here today because West Virginia is $784 million in debt, complete, absolute debt. Right here, they're building brand new houses. Now they've taken the white folks and black folks and they move them down the road here to substandard housing conditions so that 321 Syrian Muslims can move down in this neighborhood in two months when these are completed. This is at a cost of $87 million. You see that funeral home over there? It is to be torn down in two months and a mosque is going to be built there. In six months, this place is going to be a Sharia zone, meaning no non-Christians can walk down here except Muslims. Now, why would they take white Americans and black Americans and throw them down over there in substandard housing and give this to the Islamic people who come here last month, you all remember on WOWK News? They come here three months ago, 321, and you all cheered and get down here and protested. They live here. They're living here free on your taxpayers' money while regular Americans are suffering down the street here. These Islamic people here, they get $400 for each child while the regular Americans get nothing. They get cars, they get phones, they get free health care. And regular Americans, black and whites, they're suffering. When is America going to speak up for our people? Screw these Muslims and get them out. This is where your money is, West Virginia. $87 million of your tax money is right here while your own people are suffering. You want to waste taxes on cigarettes at a dollar a pack. Meanwhile, everybody going to Kentucky and making Kentucky very wealthy people. You want to waste taxes on gasoline. Everybody going across the border to get it. You politicians, you need to speak up. You need to say, no, we're not having this. We have Americans suffering in this country right now. Here's your proof. $87 million West Virginia tax paying dollars is going to Islamic refugees right here. Speak up, America. Well, uh, I just want to say um, whether it's uh, Muslim or any other um, immigrant population or refugee population, it's an outrage. It is an outrage that American tax dollars are going to build homes for refugees or uh, illegal immigrants and Americans themselves are displaced, living in substandard housing. They desperately need help and yet the money is going to non-Americans. Yes, very upsetting, don't you think? Okay. Um, I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along. This is an arraignment for the New Zealand shooter, the suspect in New Zealand, the mosque shootings, which have there were a number of people shot, right? Okay, I haven't even looked into this, and apparently now we have another shooting um, in Holland. There was a shooting in Austin. Oh, God. Um, all right. So I haven't looked at any information except for the headlines of articles. I I'm... You know, all of the mass shooting uh, events that took place in this country, I, I'm just, I'm done with it, you know, and especially when I see a headline, New Zealand, uh, the legislators all agree on gun control measures. It's not just happening in the United States. It's really particular to Western countries, um, they want all of our guns. 
All right. I want you to listen to this. Now, I am going to link below to everything. So just to make things a little bit quicker here, I'm just going to take it to 42, okay? True to the High Court. Next available hearing date soon. Okay. Thank you. Please join our counsel, name is Burtis, I appear for the police. Uh, I signalled earlier, sir, seeking an order for interim suppression of the named victim in the charging document. Uh, Did you hear that? Let me play it one more time. And I'll even increase the volume a little bit. Okay. Suppression of the named victim in the charging. What? This is the arraignment for the New Zealand shooter. Of the named victim in the charge. The named victim? Singular? Not plural? Is that not a little odd? Charging document uh, under the Criminal Procedure Act. And the submission is that it would cause undue hardship to that victim's family at this early time to that victim's family. Singular, not plural. Well, I do have some subscribers, uh, New Zealanders. Please weigh in on this. Um, is there something that we don't know that maybe you know that you could clear this up? It does seem a little odd. One victim, victim's family. Not families. All right. Um, yes, our world is really quite strange. Now, I do want to thank the subscriber for sending this along to me. This is 60 Minutes Overtime. Is an invis invisible weapon targeting U.S. diplomats. Amazing how we can't seem to resolve anything. This, How long has this been going on? Over a year. So you know about the U.S. diplomats in Cuba, um, Americans in China, uh, they coming back and they experiencing an awful lot of symptoms. I can't play any of this video, by the way, not even a second, because I'll get a copyright strike. So U.S. diplomats, for the first time, are being interviewed. For the first time, you get to hear U.S. diplomats who are affected by an invisible weapon in Cuba. So, uh, and it's really very interesting. This is um, just five minutes, but they talk to, they talk to the victims and they report symptoms that, oh, let me ask you, do you identify? Do you have these symptoms? Uh, nausea, dizziness, headaches. One woman <clears throat> uh, says that she is, she experiences, um, her equilibrium is off. Balance problems. And this man talks of how he has significant problems retrieving words. Another talks about how debilitating the experience was, how uh, it was so debilitating that it felt like your head was splitting in two. I'm reading these symptoms because I know that so many of you experience the exact symptoms. Ultrasound weapons used against U.S. diplomats, Gwen Towers, extremely low frequencies in the ultrasonic range. We are inundated with ultrasonic weapons. On a daily basis, you can see these extremely low frequencies being uh, set off uh, Doppler radar. I have posted a lot of videos on those extremely low frequencies. I have posted videos on the studies, the biological effects 
of extremely low frequencies. And wouldn't you know what these U.S. diplomats, the symptoms that they report are the symptoms in those studies, the biological effects. So uh, it's very upsetting. They talk about how these weapons are invisible. And so there's, I think that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, one of them didn't want to disclose her name. And I guess she wears, you know, a disguise though. I don't know, these disguises that we see people, I doesn't seem, well, I think she's wearing a wig and glasses. All right, whatever. But she, um, and all of them are talking about all of these really debilitating symptoms that they're still experiencing, by the way. Where are they living in the United States? Are they living next to Gwen Towers? Um, but the microwave emissions from cell towers, are they using cell phones? Do they have Wi-Fi in their home? Um, all of that, the cumulative effect, unfortunately, uh, once you cross the line, and you can cross it dramatically, I actually crossed it dramatically, and then I experience symptoms all the time. Um, only the symptoms got worse and more varied the more I was in an environment where the saturation of these frequencies coming from Gwen Towers and Cell Towers and Wi-Fi and smart meters, uh, you get worse. So it doesn't surprise me that they were attacked in Cuba and they're still experiencing these symptoms. Um, one person was talking about how you know, they couldn't sleep. One woman talked of this amazing pressure in her head. How many of you are experiencing pressure in your head? I have actually quite often. Um, I'm looking for that one woman, though I think it was her. Um, feeling great pressure in the head which came with pain and it was almost paralyzing. Children also had symptoms. Dogs uh, of, you know, these um, families. The dogs got sick, the children got sick, the adults got sick. And then, you know, they asked this question about, uh, you know, the, the reporting on something invisible and uh, described as bizarre and there were reports of <laughs> mass hysteria mass hysteria with these u.s diplomats they just suddenly became hysterical and made all of this up and because the we weapons are invisible um they're asked you know could it could it just be a matter of their imagination or psychosomatic, you know. You have an experience that, well, we know hundreds of thousands of people, no doubt even in the millions, are experiencing these symptoms. But you're not, you know, a U.S. diplomat and interviewed on 60 Minutes. So an awful lot of people also have these symptoms and don't attribute it to that invisible Wi-Fi in their home. These frequencies are really very, very dangerous. So that's why they come up with these, well, it could be mass hysteria. It could be their imagination. It could be, it could be, well, the reporters on 60 Minutes. Um, they had their doubts at first, but in talking to them, uh, many of the elements that they were talking about, many of the factors discounted 
a claim of mass hysteria or their imagination. When the dogs were getting sick at the same time and the children are getting sick at the same time and these U.S. diplomats are experiencing, um, on the whole, the same symptoms, yes, you do have to discount that. But when people have an experience that, well, either people want to not believe there are invisible weapons out there or just don't believe somebody when they're talking about their experience oh because they haven't had the experience and we've got a whole lot of them and that is extremely narcissistic if i haven't had the experience nobody has wow um you know this experience is real and for the targeted in individuals. It's unfortunate that we still have, even though you, when you're listening to these people, you know, they sound extremely credible, uh, intelligent, you know, what did the U S diplomats just to get, get together and say, Hey, let's just, you know, pull this hoax and we'll act like we're hysterical. Or did they just suddenly become, um, it, we'll call it late onset hysteria. Yeah, we need to start believing people. Um, so I will link below to this, and I think you'll find it interesting. Unfortunately, all of these agendas that are taking place, we can't get anywhere with them. That's what's really upsetting. I'm going to play just a few minutes of Stephen Molyneux. Um, because I want everybody to get, and not a lot of people do, and, you know, people can be awake, but you have lives, <laughs> you know, you've got children, you've got work, you've got, you know, so you don't have the time to dig through as much as I dig through. And what I always want to do is really show the big picture in terms of all of these agendas. Now, how many people are suffering the consequences of weather being used as a weapon? Um, millions upon millions upon millions. The numbers, uh, it, it, yeah, the numbers are growing. Um, but in terms of our countries, Canada, U.S., U.K., it, yeah, we are in bad, bad, bad trouble because we are racing towards totalitarianism and everybody seems to be embracing it. Not everybody, uh, but a whole lot of people are just sleepwalking, not getting this incredibly dangerous time that we are living. Here we go. And for those, look, this is not about Stephen Molyneux, okay? Um, and yeah, um, some people have a dramatic way of talking, all of that. Put, try to, try to put down your judgments and just listen to the message, okay? It, because we're at a time when we need to just be focusing on the message, you know? how somebody delivers it, what they're saying. Oh my God, the person cursed. Oh, I have to unsubscribe. Come on. Come on. Um, the message is what is important. And you know what? We ran out of time years ago. Years ago. Something, something that's, that's very strange, strange my friends. friends. I am sitting here in Vancouver, a civilized city. Roads, cars, electricity, police. And at the same time as I'm sitting in the civilized city, I have also experienced for the past few days being hunted through the city 
in a terrible, awful civilization shredding game of cat and mouse with the extreme leftists who violently, literally violently object to a free speech gathering where a couple of hundred people, myself, Lawrence and others, get together to talk about ideas and philosophy with Q&As and debates, all of that good, civilized, Socratic style of reasoning and gathering. And, and to, to be, be hunted, hunted from, from venue, venue to venue, like the fox of a mouse, is an appalling situation to be in. Appalling situation to be in. For 12 years in the public sphere, I have bent every muscle, every fiber, all the force of my intellect and personality to bear on keeping the conversation alive, on keeping free speech alive, on having us sit at, at a table, table and reason with one another. another. But, but it seems like now, these days, days more, more than, than seems is the case that there are significant sections, sections of the population who don't, don't want, want to sit and reason, but would rather bay and hunt and threaten and, and deplatform. And, and for those, those of you who are not going through these kinds of experiences, I really, really, really want you to understand that out beyond this fragile, flickering firelight of civilization, there are other wolves circling, sniffing, scratching for the weakness, looking to snap at us. And they are a lot closer than you think. And trying, and trying to get, get people, people to understand, understand this is really hard. It's, it's really, really frustrating. frustrating. People, people are concerned about whether my heart, my heart is motivated by hatred or, 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 or bigotry or... Uh, it's, it's astounding. astounding. I'm, I'm not making any death threats. threats. I'm, I'm not, not trying, trying to deplatform people. people. I'm not lying. lying. About, about people. The things that are paraded around, around and said, I'm, I'm a fascist, I'm a, I'm a racist, I, 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 I characterize the Holocaust, Holocaust as an overreaction, absolutely false, offensive. Half my family is German. The degree to which they suffered under the National Socialists in the Second World War is beyond our collective imaginations. But people are concerned, well, what, what, what if death says something to me? It, 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 it's, it's an astonishing place, place to be, philosophically. And I feel like people are just sleepwalking into the mouths of totalitarianism. And he's right. Now, when I said some people, you know, speak dramatically, what he is talking about is, uh, well... What we are living is very dramatic. I was talking about his poetic use of language. Um, and uh, <laughs> God, right now, I would take anybody's um, uh, eloquence as opposed to mine, which, you know, I think has just been whacked um, by many factors, but one of them are, well, frequencies. So, yeah, we're in bad, bad, bad straits. And if we don't all stand up, and if we can't, you know, join together, put down our insignificant differences, it does not matter that I don't call myself a Christian. Um, it, it does not matter that I'm white. It does not matter that I am female. Uh, for the males and black people and all, you know, people who are not white, we need to come together. And if we don't, if we remain isolated, you know, I'm posting videos and then I know so many are isolated. They're just posting videos like in their own homes or wherever, but we're not organized. Um, you know, it's really... Now, 
take what he was saying. Now, he is getting this because he's Stephen Molyneux. Okay. Um, think about your own interactions with people who do not want to know the truth. And think about how hostile and aggressive they become when you open conversations about the very serious uh, agendas taking place to transform this country into, well, uh, a kumbaya world, you know, where no borders and we're all new world order and yay, 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 hey, this is fabulous. No, it is, uh, it's kind of totalitarianism that we cannot even imagine. We're living what we could not imagine years ago. I mean, how many of you imagined that you would be living what you are living today? I don't think any of you would say, oh yeah, I imagined it about 20 years ago, and I knew that we would have snowflakes, and I, this whole new, you know, lexicon, um, you know, I knew that we would have snowflakes, and safe rooms in college, and uh, crazy people, and everybody would be called, you know, a, a Nazi, a racist, a, a, no, okay, things are very, very different, uh, and unfortunately, this is not funny, you know, this is really serious, very serious, you know, I had a conversation, a long conversation with a subscriber, Today, yesterday, we were talking about um, how people behave now. And you can't make sense of, of how they behave. They say things that don't make sense. She was telling me about this... Um, it could have been like a budding friendship with somebody... Um, you know, was told to, she was going away, and then, you know, this person said, well, you know, get in contact with me when you get back, and she did, and left her a message saying, you know, something about getting together, and the answer was the name of a restaurant. That was it. It was a text. That was it. It wasn't, oh, great, you're back. Yeah, let's get together, you know, at five at this restaurant. No, it was just the name. And then, you know, not hearing anything, um, I think called or maybe texted and said, well, did you, did you give me that name of a restaurant because you want to meet there and all she got back was check it out you know now I'm thinking that's kind of robotic isn't it <laughs> those responses but I too am getting really bizarre responses behavior that I can't I literally I, I there, I can't make sense of what people are doing and saying. But what it's doing is creating more and more bad energy. It's not a, oh, isn't this funny? It doesn't make sense. No, this is, uh, well, from my experience, it's been hostile. It's been aggressive. It's been... Um, shaming, it's been a whole lot of things. And you're like, okay, you know, how I used to be able to relate to people, and now, all right, what happens? You become more and more isolated. So um, we have a very, very big, big, big problem. And yeah, you know, what we need to do, you can't change people, you can change yourself. 
you know, increase your awareness on your own behaviors. Um, and, you know, just keep putting uh, one foot forward, taking, you know, each day as it comes and being very aware that you are taking right action and you are communicating clearly with people and you don't lie. You know, and, uh, and we clean up our act. You know, humanity has really, uh, the rapidity with which it has just descended into, you know, God. Talk about low. I mean, it's sub low. It's like now it's not even on a low road. It's now kind of, uh, digging into the earth going that low. So, but it's also creating, you know, there's a loss of um, any kind of social cohesion that makes it ripe, ripe to rapidly transform a society. So we've got to come together. I'm going to ask you to hold on one second. Okay, listen to this. This is in um, the UK. Well, I'm going to ask them to speak to you make you aware. aware. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. your, your comments are visible, visible online. online. Oh, oh, I know that. I've been doing it for 20 years. years. Yeah. 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 So, so why are you here? Just explain to you. Yeah, yeah. The fact that what you said was that the captain was not alone. Yeah. Right. right. So it's completely sort of inciting something. Inciting what? Inciting something, something based on an outcome that, that hasn't, hasn't yet, yet even been visualised. No one knows what's, what's going to happen, happen or not. Well, if you're going to be people, do you think that I'm going to be the only one? It might be the only one. Well, well, this is what I'm getting into. This is what I'm getting into. Because we need to get into it. Because if you think about it, if, if Brexit, Brexit is denied, denied right, right? <clears throat> it's not just going to be isolated isolate pop-ups of violence. The whole country is going to be in flight. Mm -hmm. You should talk to 17 people people. Yeah. Do you think yeah. I'm going to be the only one? You've got your own comments and thoughts about it. That's fair enough. I think, I think a lot of people have. And we've got the right to express it. And you don't seem to get that. Do you? Who sent you? It's good from my perspective. And, and the inspector is being ordered, is, ordered, is, is, is he taking take it upon himself? himself? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, because you're going out of my house, house door, 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 asking me, you know, you know, where, where, you know, you know I should be careful, careful mindful of the comments I'm making, right? The perfect way within the law, right? Oh, yeah. I've got to say, otherwise, I'm dealing with a different way. I'm not saying, saying you're right, let's, 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 right. let's say the worst happens, happens. The, the government betrays the people. people. Right, right. 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 I trust those people. I go around, around there, there with a group of people, people and we trudge around and we, and we question, question how can we do this to our country? How can we call yourself a politician? People have voted you into power, we trusted you. This is one of the strongest representatives in the country. And you've gone and done this? How can you do that? Right, well we're going to decide now that we don't want you in our town anymore. Leave. Is that illegal? illegal? Mm -hmm. So, 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 that we have to change ourselves, that we can't let our uh, local government officials dictate how we will live. They can't continually vote against what the residents in those communities want. And that we see time and time again, that we do. And I, I might've even said, you know, we need to drag these people out of office, get rid of them. Am I voicing that? Am I, am I suggesting violence? No, I'm not. I'm saying 
these people need to go. And, you know, if I did ever say, you know, drag them out of office, um, I am sure that I didn't mean that literally. What I meant was you can't keep putting up with this. You know, there are so many people who are still, well, I'll vote them out of office. By the time you vote them out of office, you, know, you may be having the police come to your door. You may lose more and more of your property rights. You may lose more and more of your uh, freedom of speech, your freedom. So this is this that that you just saw this video, which you can watch the entire thing. I'll link to everything below. Get it. That is totalitarian. This is, you know, a dictatorship that is now so in our face, those in the UK, it's in your face, Australia, it's in your face, and we can't, we cannot continue to comply, to obey, to because it's only going to get worse. And people, you know, right, the, the cops say, oh, well, you know, we're just coming to have a conversation. No, you didn't break the law. Eventually, it will be something that is legislated. You will be breaking the law, and the police will be coming to arrest you. This is not the world I believe any of us want. So, you know, we need to, we really, somehow, we've got to come, become a force of good here because evil is winning. All links are below. Thank you for listening. Ciao, guys.